I, I was involved in the family business, and, uh, and which was a liquor store, and uh, I built it up quite a bit, at, starting at the age of 22, though I worked there at, what, since I was 16 or 15, and uh, grew it, and, and built a 40,000 square foot store, and huge online presence, started in 1997, became one of the largest independent wine retailers in America, and uh, had 100 employees, and doing all these tens of millions of dollars a year in sales, and I turned 30 years old and freaked out and really like internally felt that I had something else to give. Seeing that the wine industry was kind of broken, missed a lot of misconceptions, a lot of preconceived notions, and seeing things like Zay Frank and Rocket Boom and, and Lazy Sunday going so viral on YouTube, I thought video online was a real great opportunity for me. I thought I had something to share, I thought people would enjoy it, and so on uh, February 20th of 06, I started Wine Library TV. to Wine Library TV, I am your host, I don't know why I did that, Gary Vayner. You know, if you put out quality content, people find you. And so I started getting small little pieces of attention. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time branding in Facebook or MySpace and things of that nature. And over time, you know, I started getting that first, the first 10,000 I think is really difficult. Once you get a little momentum, then you've got a chance. And then New York Magazine wrote a big story about the phenomenon when it was still at that 10,000 viewers a day level. And that led to Time Magazine, which led to Conan O'Brien and Ellen DeGeneres and Nightline. And when you start getting that kind of national attention, it obviously trickles into a lot of online hype. And you know, leveraging Twitter and, and really you know, branding what I was doing, spending countless hours reading you know, thousands of RSS's and, and understanding what Seth Godin and Guy Kazaki and these kind of characters think and do and, and going to conferences and shaking hands and kissing babies and doing whatever the heck I have to do. All the while, while putting out a 20 minute wine show five days a week that, you know, because of my expertise in that category, is high quality content. A simple affiliate program to the wines I put up on the show would, you know, I kind of looked at the clicks and ran the percentages, is something I could make thousands of dollars a week on. Major Fortune 500 companies have even approached me because wine is at a very high demo to do very interesting cross-promoting and profitable opportunities. I've stayed away from that because I'm in a very interesting conflict. I review wine, I sell. So I already feel that I'm in that church and state zone and I'm very cognizant of that, I'm very concerned. I don't want people to think I'm peddling wine on the show. Now, I've panned 70% of the wines that have been on the show, so over two years I've kind of built up that street cred where I feel like I'm in a good place. But the bottom line is that if you're a niche video marketer, there is more potential for monetizing what you do because you're, you're smaller but focused and there's a lot of people. For example, if I was a sushi video blogger or a garden or a instructor on how to play badminton. I think there's monetizing opportunities out there because there's not a lot of places for a badminton store to advertise. So I, I think that to answer your question for people that are watching this that are in the business, there's a lot of opportunity in that, in that you know, way of doing video. For me personally, it's just not something I'm super, super focused on. I'm far more excited by you know, fans ripping off my clothes while I walk in the streets.